Thank you for downloading, subscribing, and telling your friends about the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. Coming to you from the kitchen studios in downtown Raleigh. This episode is sponsored in part by Spot On, tech that helps your business grow. Request a demo at spoton.com. And GigPro. Change the way you find staff with GigPro. And Joe Van Gogh Coffee, serving the community from seed to cup. And now, sanitizing 25% of the microphones 50% of the time, it's Max Trujillo and Matthew Weiss. Hello, and thank you for listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. I am your co-host, Max Trujillo. And I am your co-host, Matthew Weiss. And I am tired of all the Valentine's Day chocolate. I needed another something sweet. So... We called Allison Vick and her husband, Carl. Hot Carl. Hot Carl. (laughs) To bring us some macarons. Yes, you said it right. From Little Blue Macaron. (laughs) Here they are, the Vicks. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, welcome. Okay, real fast. Macaroon, macaron. Yes. What's the difference? So a macaroon, two O's technically, is the coconut treat. That's Mm -hmm. shredded coconut, egg white, sugar, Mm -hmm. baked into like a little lump. Which is quite delicious. Delicious. Great for Passover, too. Passover, yeah. Yeah, Big Passover treat. Macaron is the French macaron that is the two shells made out of almond flour, uh, egg white, sugar, and it's got a filling inside, ganache, buttercream, whatever. Whatever is your fancy. And they're usually super beautiful. Yeah. And, and an array Diffic- of colors. Difficult to make. A little harder than just lumping coconut onto a tray, but um, but a fun process. Yeah, so when you're at the macaron like, festival, you guys look at the macaroon folks and you're like, <laughs> child's play. Well, you know what? Also, <laughs> like, living here in the South, I would say one of the biggest questions I get at markets, people are like, am I saying it right? Am I saying it right? And honestly, I don't... It doesn't matter. We're in the South. If you're going to say macaroon, I know what you're talking about. It's okay. Like, I, yeah. I'm not going to fall well, then. If you, somebody says, oh, can I have a macaroon? And then you're like, all right, here you go. And then like, there's no coconut in here. Yeah, and this, right? has got two, this is almond flour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you guys are little blue macaron. Mm-hmm. Macaron. <laughs> but you are coming from... It's not from... Jewish. You don't have to do it. <laughs> it's macaron. It's like the O is on. Macron? No, you said it differently now. Macron. Three syllables. You can go macaron. Because macaron is the French president. Yeah. So ma- Emmanuel. macaron. Macaron. Yeah. So Mac. you've been making these Mac. little dessert Mac-Macs. sandwiches <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> out of uh, out of the kitchen archive for the last few years, right? Yeah. Just down the way. Or mm-hmm. are you in the Raleigh kitchen archive? We are. We're in the Raleigh one, so we're literally right down the street yeah. from you guys. With previous guests of the show. Yeah. Sam's uh, Bites of Sam. Actually, Bites of Sam is out of um, Preeti's Kitchen. Correct. Uh huh. But we have Bold Batch Creamery. Um, oh, yeah. Previously, Twelve Paws. More Twelve Paws. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then we and then even like OG. Wait, this is new. Oh, and Hold Beth, on. Beth Why Little did Mora, John? Why did Mora switch her uh, name to Bold Batch? She did a rebranding, and it honestly it looks bomb. It looks really good. She was wait getting a minute. A lot of, I didn't even catch that. So wait, Twelve yeah. Paws ice cream is now gotta, called what? It's Bold called Batch. Bold Batch Creamery. Oh. Yeah, you got to check it out. Let's give her she, a shout out. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. It's yeah, like because, psychedelic, trippy, cool looking, kind of a little bit more representative of like how bold and unique her brand is. But she got a lot of questions like 12 paws is it for dogs right. i don't know so she was yeah. trying to distance herself i could from see that. that yeah 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 well great now that episode's completely ruined more yeah. <laughs> thanks a lot <laughs> gotta read the whole thing. thing i'll tell her i'll tell her yeah. today she ruined it um she better be listening and you were gonna say about say, little beth, uh, beth, beth little john? john told me to give you guys a, a hello because she said hello. she's also little been john. on the show mm-hmm. back when she was with pr so she's with um the produce box doing she runs their entire carolina flavors program also out of the kitchen archive oh wow this is news we are i, I mean you guys are like i don't yeah. need to check my twitter feed you're now. telling yeah. us what's going yeah. on <laughs> beth little john is is one of my favorites. She's such an amazing chef. I remember back in the day when I first started at uh, uh, when I first started here in North Carolina. I was the GM at Midtown Grill, and across the street was Coquette, and that's where yeah. I had first met her. And she was dominating all service there for so long. And uh, and then I'd see her, and uh, you know, after hours because we we stayed open late, so you, I'd see everybody come over. She's awesome, and I actually I met her at the James Beard Foundation Women's Seminar, which is where I met your wife. So oh, yeah. a lot of the people that I I now know in the industry came from that pre-pandemic last meeting before everything yeah, went ham. Before the so. world shut down. Yeah. So uh, all right, let's get into that before. So we love to get the genesis genesis of the story. So you were you guys were li- you're from Raleigh. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But you were living in Austin, Texas. That's right. We so you made a move. Yeah, we both went to Broughton. Uh, we both went to NC State. Okay. But we moved to Austin to say we did something different. We were just going to go for a hot minute, but we stayed like after, for, co- what's after Broughton? college. Broughton is the high school down the road. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we're uh, we're high school sweethearts. So <laughs> that's right. not in a cult way, but you <laughs> and know. you guys see, I mean, you guys seem still like enchanted with each other. Yeah, Bravo! I mean, it was Valentine's Day yesterday, right? So you're on like a little bit of a. There you go. Was it a nice Valentine's? Uh, we have been so busy, and like I'm still like sore and tired from. You know, sixty-hour work week, eighty-hour work week, and we have a so, four-year-old and like an oh, almost yeah. two-year-old. But I cry so, me a river. I did. <laughs> no, I, can... I did make it Eskazu's chocolate. Another yes. shout out. So like, yeah. um, that's when you get the bakery yeah. that needs something. Got my mom some chocolates too. Yeah, yeah, my Gosh. aunt. So Good the season. aforementioned my wife Felicia. She mm-hmm. puts on Facebook a picture of me and says. Oh, here's my husband. Happy Valentine's Day. He's uh, I've done nothing for you for Valentine's, but here's my message to you. Maybe text me later if you get this or something. <laughs> and to which then I just wrote on there, I'm like, I'm busy cooking you dinner right now. I don't have time to text you. Because, yeah, like after we, that was the one day off I've had since we've been uh, trying to get yeah. crafting off the ground, which opened up yeah. over the weekend. And it's been nuts. But I was like, all right. Let's uh, let's do this. We had a couple of nice bottles of wine. I say couple because we decided <laughs> a little uh, Borealis from uh, Washington, right? I believe that's the Montanor. Didn't you sell this wine, Matt? I don't no. know. But anyhow, <laughs> it's like a it's a white blend. It's like Miller Turgau, Riesling, and uh, maybe Gewürztraminer. I don't know. It's it's delicious. L- sure. Nice little white. And then we uh, just did a big juicy cab from. Um, I think Bogle's making their own like separate label. I got all the stuff over at Taylor's Wine Shop. I didn't go to oh, trying the wine company Taylor's. because uh, I, uh, Taylor's was right on the way home and I was running out of time. Normally, like I'd them. go to trying a wine company to get all of my wine needs because they're awesome and sponsor the podcast. And they're all really right. great. Way to work it in. <laughs> but do, we do like Taylor's. They're cool. Live bait good. and great wine. Yeah. yeah. And actually, you know, while you're at it, you just remind me of something. And I want to get more into why you guys moved to Austin mm-hmm. and how you got out of your corporate job to do macarons. But, uh, you know, you opened Crafton and it occurred to me that you had shared with me, and I won't share who your vendors are for your technology, but that like you were having some trouble with paying out X person and Y person and working the payroll and mm-hmm. getting the tickets to run right and getting if all this only technology. I had spot on. If only you had spot on. And by the way, people go, well, why don't you? Because whatever. Well, I sent a contract with a different company long before I knew who spot on even was. Right. But had you known yeah. that spot on could have taken care of all of these needs, they could have made it <laughs> ABC, easy as ABC one, two, three mm-hmm. for all your back of the house, your front of the house. And when you were on your day off, you probably could have just you know, mm-hmm. get out the old iPhone and the Google machine and worked out a couple of things <laughs> and made sure that when you came back to work, it was a lot simpler because that's what Spot On does. They make your life as a restaurateur or a retail shop. They take all that technology, put it into one little thing and make it streamlined for you and super easy. So all you have to do, you guys are opening up a business soon. So yeah. think about calling Tanya Manibo from Spot On. Her phone number is 858-213-7820. That's 858-213-7820. Or you can email her at Tanya M at spoton.com. That's T-A-N-Y-A-M at spoton.com. And hey, calling all restaurants and hospitality. You know, I just did this myself. We're talking about Gig Pro, everybody. Owners, managers, and employees get to know Gig Pro. They're changing the way people work and hire. They're not just filling shifts, but they're bringing instant solutions to the table for the entire industry. And I got to say, Gig Pro, uh, I'm already, like, as a business owner, um, I have an account with Gig Pro. I've already put out some some leads because uh, you know finding a dishwasher in these days isn't necessarily the easiest thing especially one that wants to come back after a shift so uh mm-hmm. people are nodding and smiling as they're listening to this that have been in the same situation because that's a common occurrence but um but it's easy you get on the app whether you are a business owner and you 
you post a job and you say, this is what we want to do. You, this is how much the, the pay is, the hours, the time, the skill level of what I need. And then if you are an employee or somebody looking to be an employee, you get on your app and you see, oh, that guy just posted that that job. I'll click into it. Does that work for my schedule? Does it work for my skill set? Does that work for my timeline? If all those things make sense, then boom, you match, you connect, and then you go to work that day. And the nice part is most of everything is all taken care of. I mean, there's like 30 four cents at an hour that get taken care of for your insurance. So you're covered and you can be protected while you're there. But the employer themselves pays a little bit, pay 18% above uh, what they're going to pay for the whole day to gig pro. That's how they get paid. But, you're, they're connecting the business owner and the employees, and who knows? Maybe that person becomes your next full-time employee, or they just helped you out in a pinch when you needed it. So go to gigpro.com backslash NCFB and get your first gig free on GigPro. Yeah, it's like the Airbnb for uh, for the restaurant world. All right, so we were in Austin, Texas. Yes, you yes. were behind a cubicle working... Mm-hmm. A snoozy corporate job. Yeah. What were you I had doing? A salary. I had a health salary. benefits. Wow. Yeah. I was doing a doing the real thing, which is what my parents really wanted me to do is get, you know, get a nice corporate job, try it out. So right. um, I worked there for three years. I was in international education. So I was um, sending kids abroad specifically onto programs in Spain and then into Morocco. Um, and I, I loved it. The company was awesome, and I made a ton of friends. That's how we met everyone who are still some of our best friends today. Um, but, you know, it was a desk job, a 9 to 5, 9 to 6, behind a cubicle and behind a computer screen all day. So it wasn't very satisfying. And they and, didn't have the blue light glasses back then. So yeah, it was like no, 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 no. <laughs> you were just full eyeballs to the screen. But I I always wanted to work in pastry. And I knew that. I worked at the cupcake shop for a little a little while after I graduated college when we were trying to figure out what we want to do next. You know, then I went and took this corporate job in, in Austin. And Carl went back to school. He uh, went to grad school down there while, mm-hmm. while I was doing this. What were you studying? Well, I originally studied philosophy and and. That's just like kryptonite on a resume, I feel like, for like corporate jobs. Like, <laughs> yeah. It is just like people was like, is that astrology? What's your sign? Every time I say that. So like uh, I went back to school. I was doing like Aristotle, co- Socrates, Plato. <laughs> yeah. like, And they're like, is that a cracker? Um, and I went back to uh, school. I was doing like cognitive sort of philosophy and um, went back to school for like psychotherapy and then got in a crap load of debt. So you're going to be a therapist. I was, uh, and I ended How up. How do you feel about that? Uh, <laughs> I have lots of feelings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But anyways, I, I ended up in like a corporate job to like help get rid of some of the debt, and it was a sales job, and we were made. I was, you know, it was it's pretty good money, and then um, what were you selling? Just tech. Like, okay. it was, like, a reseller for, like, uh, larger companies. Like, you know, you don't – if you need 500 computers, you don't go to Best Buy. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, very sort of uh, soul-sucking. But, you know, some people love it. And, uh, it, you know, I, it was a trade off. you know. Right. Uh, we were comfortable, but uh, – Neither like of financially us com- com- yeah. Yeah, financially yeah. comfortable. Neither of us were happy with what we were doing. So, so what? What? What was the seed change? I, I, uh. a, I actually. So I had a friend that um, that I was working with that actually now owns a taco uh. shop in Austin called Nixta Taqueria. That is a um, a taco shop that special specializes in the nixtamalization process, where you like actually make your own corn masa and you make your own tortillas. And they've been on like Bon Appetit's like top ten. Oh wow! Bit, you know new. Restaurants, they're awesome. Nixta. I, Nixta. If you okay. go to Austin, it's it is one of the best restaurants you can go, you can visit while you're there. It's awesome. It's incredible. But anyways, she really pushed me. At the time, we were both still doing this corporate job, and she was like, "I found a job for you, and I think you should go apply to it." And she literally forced me to do it, and and I did. And it was a job with Whole Foods. They have a flagship store down there, yeah. and they have a massive mm-hmm. catering operation, and so. I interviewed for this pastry cook position, just bottom of the line pastry cook. Graveyard shift. Graveyard shift, midnight to 8 a.m. I had to like black out the curtains for her and yep, stuff. So I got like the she job. wouldn't go crazy for not sleeping. And- yeah. And I went from salary to, you know, nine bucks an hour, no, <laughs> no benefits. So it was a. It was a completely different world, but I was, like, loving what I was doing. I was learning so much, and I was studying under a pastry chef that is incredible and was an awesome mentor for two years that I worked there. Um, 
eventually moving to the 4 a.m. to 12 p.m. shift. So worked my way up. Um, and <laughs> then and then I started working in restaurants in Austin, going from pastry cook to pastry sue. And then I finally was a, an executive pastry chef at an Italian restaurant on South Congress. And I loved it. I mean, that was like the best, cushiest, awesomest restaurant job you could have because it was like a huge family you know everybody worked well with each other just it was great but you, um, did you get to create your complete oh, yeah. your own desserts I mean, I or could you do, i control the menu we had you know we had a five to seven person team at any given time we had a bread team i mean everything was from scratch everything was sourced locally it just was like people who have true passion for the food so it was a great restaurant but you know, we had our son while we lived in Austin. So, if, you know, we were there for seven years. We came back home, got married in North Carolina, you know, went back down there. And then we had our son in 2018. And we knew we had to come back to be with where the village is because all of our yeah. family is here. Mm -hmm. So um, so we Especially moved working restaurant hours. Yeah, restaurant hours. And, and I knew I didn't want to, like, permanently be a restaurant pastry chef that is a lifestyle that some people absolutely love and are totally fitted for yeah. but it you know it wasn't for me so just question how long did it take you from going to starting working at whole foods until you got this position as pastry chef four, for years. Fine four years yeah it took four years and my my first mentor where i worked at whole foods really was the one who pushed me to use my free time outside of work to start practicing things that we aren't learning there you know on our catering team which is how i started making macarons because it was something i just was like well i know this is hard and it's kind of like a fun challenge and my first batch that i made i was like wow these look awesome these are so cool trash uh, trash i mean they i look, remember that yeah and look, i was like what's a macaroon I was like, yeah i was like these are all cracked <laughs> yeah. and this is weird yeah, yeah so like... then i just started making them for friends on the side while we were down there and then i started experimenting with shapes i gave some to quest love when he came for south yeah. by so that. that was like my big um i mean he didn't ask for them i just gave them to him so uh <laughs> you have a you have a history from what just telling yes. us that you show up at peak performers and you give them macros. i'm just like hey who's gonna say no yeah, to the cookies no, right nobody, yeah. especially when their face is on it yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, like lost the last pod and left. And, yeah. yeah. And uh, wait, wait, don't tell me. I don't know if you guys ever listened to that on NPR. I forgot I sent about them that. some macarons with their faces on them because I was on their show briefly. But anyways. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. I don't see our faces on the You know yeah. what? I we didn't have time. time. We didn't have time. I told you it was a busy week. Well, we yeah, could, dude. We could we pause. Day, we you guys could just go <laughs> Just go. We'll see you. I'm sorry. Did you not days. see the llamas and the sloths that I brought, Felicia? Yeah, she he did <laughs> not see oh, that. No, you didn't they, see. I brought special you. ones. You'll for see your them girls. tonight. Oh, really? Felicia, yeah. Yeah. Felicia right. bogarted them all for Cactuses, your daughter. Cacti, yeah. and llamas, and, and sloths. For That'll you guys. do. That'll yeah, do. Yeah, that's okay. all right. It's sort of yeah. like a constellation <laughs> macro. <laughs> okay, so but so you were like studying this off, but yes. so why why macarons? I mean, I know at the time, like that's when Moan Macron had come to New York City, and they just blew up. Is that was that on your radar? No. Okay. I mean, I know about Dana's Bakery is like one of the biggest, you know, biggest nationwide shippers. So like I knew I knew about macarons and I actually had my first one during a South by event in Austin. And that's how I got like the bug to try and make them because I was like, man, this texture is so crazy. This is so weird. Um, but when we moved home to North Carolina, uh, you know, I was privileged to be able to stay home with our son for a couple of months and figure out what we were going to do while Carl took another sales tech job. Um and I just thought, I just don't want to work in a restaurant again. I We want to do a small business. And so we started, found a place at the Kitchen Archive. I started doing the downtown Cary Farmer's Market. And I met a couple people who helped me learn, you know, about the industry here and helped me get a leg up and just been working at it ever since. So adding – during the pandemic, we kind of pivoted a little bit. We do a lot of, like – custom orders for people. We were doing a lot of markets, but we've pivoted a lot into wholesale because of, you know, we stopped doing markets during when the pandemic was high. Mm. And now we're we're back at it again just because I like to talk to people. But um but yeah, so so we've just kind of been growing our business and now we're doing this whole brand new thing, which you guys are the first people to hear about. I want to so. hear about all this new stuff. But first, <laughs> let's talk about what we're drinking right now, Ooh, which yeah. is mm. so delicious. We just had, I think you said this is the first time you've had a pour over. It is. We're drinking it's some awesome. delicious coffee out of a Chemex. And that coffee specifically is Jovango Nicaraguan Las Brisas Honey, which is 
so delicious. This particular one uh, comes from the uh, Matagalpa Reserve in Nicaragua with high elevation, a couple of thousand feet up in the air. Uh, the, it's a honey process, which is interesting. So Finca Las Brisas is one of the neighboring farms to our longtime friends at the Selva Negra Estate. It's owned by Catherine Force. Finca Las Brisas means farm in the mists, as it it's located high in the Cerro Aponte Nature Reserve in Maragalpa. It's a honey process, which is known as pulp natural, where the skin of the coffee cherry is removed, and then the pulp of the fruit is left to dry directly on the seed. This also happens to be one of their favorite methods because it develops a fruity note in the cup and is much more efficient to process than compared to its natural method due to the great amount of rainfall they receive. So, to learn a little bit more about this, you can check out jovango.com, or more importantly, just buy yourself a bag of beans and put it in your, your Chemex, get a nice little goose neck kettle, and, uh, and you'll be drinking coffee the way we're doing it right here. So go to jovango.com. Man, and I can imagine this with a cup of this, of the Finca Las Brisas. I mean, because there's nothing, obviously, like the Matagalpa Reserve. I mean, that's just no. some amazing coffee terroir. But, um, but with having it with a bite of Macron yeah. at your new shop. That's a pair. Well, let's do yeah. that right now because we have them right here, and they're like literally sitting yeah. in my lap. Don't don't take any of mine, okay? Um, no, so so yeah, Max is going to tell us how that pairing's going. But uh, so now you're at this point where you're you've did you've done the markets, you've mm-hmm. kind of established a little bit of a name, and uh, and now you're getting ready to open brick and mortar. Yeah, and, right. and not just any brick and mortar. We. We wanted to, um, you know, we wanted to have a place where we can retail our product at the same place that we're cooking it because we love the Kitchen Archive so much, but it's time, we've grown out of it, it's time to have a place where people can just easily grab cookies. I get that all the time. They're like, hey, where's your store? Yeah. Um, But, so, it was really Carl's idea, the larger project that we're working on. Well, you know, we were getting ready, of course, right before pandemic and uh, pandemic hit and we're like, well, let's pump the brakes. You know, we, we were getting ready to sign some papers maybe and. Um, for a smaller spot, and then you know, flash, you know, f- uh, fast forward to today, and it kind of grew um, in its scope and idea. We always had the idea to maybe have someone in the back, you know, use some of that space as well, and and sell up front with us as well. Mm-hmm. So now we're gonna have uh, it's gonna be called Little Blue Bakehouse. And um, we will have four different vendors in the back, four different, but it's all bakery focused. Yeah, so it's all under the Department of Agriculture. Yeah. It's all focused towards <sighs> bakers who are growing their businesses. Right. And we'll provide a you know display case for them up front sort of thing. And we'll have a cafe up there serving coffee. Yeah, and it's just really this idea that because we were having the issue of the size that was the size spaces that were offered in Raleigh were just a little too pricey for what we thought we the value should be. Yeah. And so you're like a bakery food hall. Yeah, yes. it'll be a bakery food hall. And it's going to be next to the Alamo Draft House. So it's in the Longview Shopping Center, yeah. literally two doors down from the Alamo. That's a cool spot. Uh, yeah, we love that spot. Well, coming from Austin, we were obsessed with the Alamo Draft House. That's where it started. That's right. We would mm-hmm. go to the OG one all of the time. And I said, I'm not moving back to North Carolina until they put drop an <laughs> Alamo Draft House. So when they did, three days before we moved home, we ended up purchasing a house in that area too. So it's it's our neighborhood yeah. that's our area mm-hmm. we love it so much and we really want to see the growth and we want to be a part of that growth and and try to bring some more flair to that that area but by the way you know that alamo draft house yes technically started in austin but do you know where it really started no bakersfield california okay i did not know that because mm. uh i met the guy i met the owner yeah Tim League. Uh, yeah and yeah. uh, when he opened up out here and did like a i was invited to a media tour which was cool oh. and he actually took over a movie theater house against his parents wishes they're like what are you doing why would you do this he's like because i love movies it's so cool and he got this theater out there and had it for like a short while and it was a total failed experience and it didn't work but then when he eventually moved to austin he found another opportunity he's like i'm gonna do this again I'm All gonna right. do it. And his parents are like remember when you messed it up the first time like why are you doing this but he's like i i feel it i see like there's a way to do this and alamo draft houses are cool they're, they're very cool they're, yeah they're, they're a cool thing they're they, they were a product of like, will they survive through 
the pandemic, yeah. Oh, yeah. but they, they leaned it out. Now they're back. They did, mm-hmm. yeah. And so we knew when we So moved, wait, just yeah. geography-wise, where exactly is that? Because I it's actually on, have It's on New Bern in between downtown and Big Wake Med. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's actually, it's very close to downtown yeah. Raleigh. It's mm-hmm. literally just a little skip. So The uh, actual address will be 2116 New Bern Avenue okay. in Raleigh, North mm-hmm. Carolina. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so that's where we're building it out now. And it's essentially, it's going to be an incubator space for other small baking businesses or baking adjacent, you know, if you're jam maker or what do you what have, have other you. bakers uh, we do assigned? have some vendors already ready to go i unfortunately can't announce it until they are ready signed to on that. the dotted line yes signed yeah. on the dotted line Heard but we that. do have they are going to be people that you know and love so it's going to be a good collaboration between all of us that's okay. really cool yeah mm-hmm. nice and when is the opening date slated Ooh, well, you know, they're telling us, like, May, oh, it'll be ready May, in May, June. which means July. So. It started least, mid-April. Yeah. We'll so. see you in August. This is yeah. a complete, <laughs> this is a complete build out. I mean, this place right. was a maybe a nail salon turned insurance office yeah. that so. has HVAC hanging through the ceiling tiles. So we are, we are building everything from the ground up. It's a complete restructuring of this, of this 3,200 mm-hmm. square foot space. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh. All right. So, and Carl, what's you, are you still in the tech sales world or have you completely left that job? Absolutely not. He's, okay. a, full, he's a full-time I literal was, sugar daddy I was now. when yeah. back. Uh, I was or you're I, his sugar mama, I guess, right? Bit, Literally. Yeah. yeah. Right? I am, Seriously. I eat so much sugar now. It's, it's I know. Like, he's an amazing frosting maker. We buy these maker. like 50-pound bags of sugar and I'm just like, oh my God, sugar, you know, uh, so much sugar. Um, but yeah, so uh, back to your question. Um yeah, when we moved back, I got another tech sales job, and I emotionally was just getting, you know, my feelings were getting <laughs> yeah, in you're the way. Yeah, you're getting right? <laughs> so, I I had to, uh, so I had to make a change, and her business was starting to pick up. And I needed help. She, yeah, and, um, you know, we have that very young child, and she got pregnant again. I'm like, well, this is growing really fast. Uh, I'm sick of my job. Uh, let's do this. And, and that's why I say it was Carl's idea. I mean, he was like, let's, that would let's be take the this eventual next. Thing. I was too scared, you know? Yeah. Carl really drove it to the next step, and he's been handling – he handles all of, like, our paperwork and our talking to, you know, our contract team and our architect team. and blah, 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 blah. Like, Carl kind of handles all that while I work on production because that's really where I, like – that's my passion. So. Yeah. So, so we make a good team. Yeah. We so have a good marital therapist as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys are very, very functional. Like so highly we, functional. Hey, there's, there's, the, un, there's uh, non-functional days. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I would say all the rough edges have been with the pandemic and then yeah. working together now. Yeah. Have been, uh, and and the, the very young children have yeah. been kind of smoothed over. When you don't sleep. Uh, yeah. You yeah. don't have energy to fight don't have energy anymore. To fight. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, we're doing we're um yeah, we're we're doing great, you know, and like uh we're you know, this will be very much kind of still like you'll she'll be still doing her macarons when the business opens. So it'll be very much kind of like two businesses. I'll be wearing many different hats. And you know, I was thinking about it's called spot on. We're still trying to figure out a POS system. Oh, you have so, to call Tanya. Yeah. Like seriously, seriously. it's totally worth it. They're, they're a strong support team. Like that's the thing that I realize is it's not even just about getting a good POS system, but it's about like the service that you need because you need that constantly, especially when you're getting going. And spot on has that. They're like they have a really strong service team. Yeah, I would love to put that hat on someone else sort of thing. And I just need something really flexible because I would get what you're doing too with Craft In. Mm-hmm. Like I need something where those guys can kind of access their own stuff and mess with their own inventory if they need to. Yeah. Like again taking a little bit of the workload off of me, and I'm hope I'm, I hope that yeah, I man, I'll definitely look into spot on. Yeah, cool. For that. Yeah, we'll have to chat offline. Uh, sure, yeah. I bet we have a lot to uh, to, to connect on. Sure, oh, I want to get back to the macaron thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So okay, so they're naturally gluten free, yes. right? Because mm-hmm. you're not always gluten free. Because it's always it by like law or by right. recipe yes, it has to be by almond recipe, flour for sure. It's almond flour. There are adaptations you can do to make them nut free. I that's something I'll experiment with when I when I find the time. But right now, yeah, they're all gluten free. I don't use. I even like I will go out of my way to bake 
the cookies to make cookie butter to make sure that the cookie butter is gluten free, which it's very difficult to find gluten free cookie butter. I've found this year, so um, so we make sure all of our components are gluten free too. Like if I make an Oreo flavor, mm. it's gluten free. Mm. So okay, um, so always, always, always gluten free. Now yeah, I'd like to know the, the the kind of the science. I always hear from yeah. everybody that they're really hard to make. So, so what makes is, it so complicated? Here's the fascinating part. Okay, so there are two different methods of making macarons. There's the French method and there's the Italian method, and makers swear and die by one of the methods. The French method, you make a meringue, you whip up egg whites with hard, refined sugar. Um, It's a big, fluffy meringue. You fold that into your dries, which are almond flour and powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that makes the cookie shell. You, You bake it, then you assemble it, yada, yada. I use the Italian method by which you make a hot sugar syrup that you pour into your whipping egg whites. It makes a very glossy meringue, and to me it's a lot more stable. And then you can mix that in with your dry material. Um, It's called the macronage. And the crazy part about like, okay, you have to go through all those steps. You got to get it right through those steps. Once you made it through those steps, you got to pipe them out. They got to be piped out right. Has to be the right consistency so that the feet are the right height, Mm. that you're not getting lopsided macarons, um, which is like the bane of a macaron maker's existence. Then they got to dry just the right amount of time so that they form a hard shell over the top before you put them in the oven. Then you have to bake them at the right temperature and the right time. And every oven is different. So you really have to figure that out convection oven uh-huh and then and then if there's if it's super humid like it is in north carolina then you gotta figure out a workaround yeah so it is an obstacle but it is a fun it's a fun learning process i really never understood that whole thing about uh the the baking process and how humid it is in mm-hmm. north carolina but i was talking to uh I was telling you about Ideals Deli and I was sitting down with Ian yeah. Bracken over there and he was telling me from coming from uh, making like New Jersey and North, Northeast sandwiches and they mm-hmm. bake the bread there every day daily. And he's like, oh, wow, did I have to change my recipes? Yeah. Because he's like, I, he's like, I never even thought about the moisture in yep. the air and how much it affects your dough. Well, and working in a massive commercial kitchen like we do right now there, I mean, you're just completely exposed to the elements because they can't control the humidity on a level like that when you're in essentially a three-story building that is just open, mm. you know? Yeah, which and I is, would assume that your recipe might have to change throughout the season, right? It's, like, uh, throughout for the me, year. I, I, I edit it with time and temperature control um, and okay. how, how I mix things, um, yeah. but I don't change my actual recipe. That one's something that I've worked on for a long time. Um, and then vegan macarons. It took me three years to get vegan macarons, right? Because that is also a whole other level when you're, you just eliminate egg whites, which is the main ingredient yeah. in cookie. Is it aquafaba? Or? I don't use aquafaba. I use a um, a plant protein that I I special order, and it can be whipped. It can be whipped in into a same... meringue. Mm-hmm. Wow! But it's it's a lot more difficult. It's a lot harder to work with. But I'm I'm glad that I finally figured it out. What about because the flavors tend to be like the the the, the yes. backbone Driver. of everything, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So how do you incorporate? How do you make your flavors, and then how do you incorporate mm-hmm. that into the recipe? Okay, so we use we use a, a couple of different things to flavor our macarons. We use dry items in the shell, so you can use like these, for example, these strawberry ones I brought you guys have mm-hmm. dehydrated strawberry in the shell. We make everything from scratch so every jam every caramel every lemon curd and that's how we build flavor because again working in the restaurant industry the difference that you can tell between somebody who's just throwing a little bit of something into the filling and hoping that flavor comes through is like building the flavor on on different levels putting it in the shell putting it in the ganache putting it in the buttercream putting it in the jam um so so we really try to build flavor across the board so for example like i said those strawberry ones strawberries in the shell There's also, um, we make a raspberry jam. We put that into the ganache that we made from scratch. And then we made a strawberry jam and we put that in the center. The lavender honey has lavender, dried lavender that we put into the shells. We use a local honey um, from Be Blessed. And then we put that into the buttercream that we make from scratch. When I say we, I mean Carl, because Carl makes all the fillings and he's a pro at it. I I can't do the shells, man. (laughs) It's just, it's too, it's it's very too, it's too technique driven. It's, uh, it's, you know, you know, you can't really just do a recipe. You have to know what she was saying. Yeah, like, you, you, have got, you have to know to what it looks like. Like you have that to perfect little sheen when it's drying, and then the meringue has to be this like perfect consistency. And I just, mm-hmm. I'm just an oaf. Okay, so <laughs> couple of questions there. What what does that mean for business wise? Like you're opening up a brick and mortar, mm-hmm. keeping it small for now, but you are getting into you do wholesale. Mm-hmm. You wholesale a restaurant. So can you? 
Can you teach somebody? Can yes, you scale and this? Yes, I, I actually have. When okay. I was an executive pastry chef, I taught my entire team to make Italian macarons because okay. it's an Italian restaurant. So, like, even though, yes, they are a French concept, but the Italians will claim the cookie shell. It just, you know, it's a mess. But <laughs> right, um, sure. but anyways, we did we did make macarons, and I trained every single person on my team to do it. You can tell when somebody's really got the talent and they they can pick it up real easy or, or if it's not going to really be perfect for them. So, yes, we are going to have to grow our team, and that means growing somebody that it's going to be baking alongside or if I'm not there that day. Um, but I'm, I'm ready to train somebody. Is that in the plan to go like big scale wholesale? Would, um, that, would that be something that you guys would be interested in? Right now it's figuring out, you know, the, the shop with and all the different relationships between all the people that are going to be in there and making sure everything's flowing right. Um, but we do have every intention to grow uh, yeah. wholesale. But I think we're kind of – we. Uh, again, we really want a, a storefront, like a retail, and yes. I think we will sell a lot more out of that first. So we're going to see how that goes and continue to slowly grow wholesale around the area. Yeah, because we um, have a lot of wholesale clients at the moment. We're ready to move into retail and yeah. have a place where you just come in and you you pick them up. You don't have to order five days in advance or you don't have to go to Idle Hour to, to pick. I mean, you can, but you don't. that's not your only option to pick up cookies. Mm -hmm. For your wholesaling, are you guys delivering self-delivering? Carl? Yeah. Jeez, I, you really are. Carl man. on the hat. Hats, Jack man. of Carl's all trades. Uh, yeah. Except for one place now. We just got Cha House Chapel Hill. So and we, we, have we hired a, a driver. Yeah, we have someone driving out. I didn't want to drive out all the way out there. But yeah. um, but everywhere else, yeah. All wow. in Carrie, yeah, Apex, we're Carrie, Apex, Raleigh. Raleigh. And that will continue as yeah. the retail or you'll uh, have them no, pick I'm up? No, I'm definitely going to have to find someone. Oh, you're going to get... Yeah, like, there's actually, no way. I'm imagine I'm going to be so busy with, with the store, so I'll just get a driver. Put a post up on Gig Pro. There you right? go. Yeah, right. Still yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another question. Yeah. Uh, is there a savory macaron? Could You could do savory macarons. Look, I don't mess with savory macarons. You absolutely can do them. Yeah. I have uh, mentored somebody those, on some savory flavors, but it, it, it's not my bag. What so. would your recommendation be? I'm thinking like a breakfast sandwich. Breakfast okay, sandwich. well, I, I actually, I have an idea. I like a little bit of savory, like umami flavor. So yeah. I have an idea for a brunch box in which we do a, a macaron that has a maple buttercream with a bacon jam in the center so okay. that it, you kind of get like a ba like a pancakes with bacon mm -hmm. combo which is what I love I like to eat a, like a piece of bacon with my syrupy pancake so yeah. so in that respect yes yeah. but I'm not out here putting mashed potatoes in between two shells. Okay. <laughs> or not like an egg and cheese macaron. <laughs> we did make a uh, cheeseburger once, once, but they weren't They savory. were not cheeseburgers. They looked, like, they looked, looked really like, like cheeseburgers, cheese though. Yeah. But they yes. were, they were yeah. 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 Could you make the shell bigger to be like an actual sandwich? You can well, make it as I big as you. I usually do, I do five inch macaron cakes as well that have massive oh, shells. Wow. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so there's that, some room to play yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. We try to, we try to keep it creative. <laughs> We've done large shells for Mora for Bold batch creamery that she puts on top of her ice cream so we do a lot of collabs with her we do little tiny mini ones for charcuterie yeah. people too yeah they like little like teeny that. tiny so like nickel people. sized ones mm -hmm. wow it just seems like so labor intensive it but is. i guess once you're in it though like... and when you love it i mean like i love it i it's we're going over three years now and i still love it as much as the first day i started doing it i think that's also because we get a lot of private clients who want really crazy things that i love to figure out how to execute so, like, um, a food blogger um, came to me recently to do a, an order of BTS macarons for her mom, and BTS B being the um, the Korean pop band, and they yeah. have these images. These of little, course, you know that. Matt. These little, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, you know, I told yeah. my daughters they didn't know what BTS stood for, so I just made it up on the spot. I said it stands for Boys That Sing. <laughs> Good guess. It That's turns good out guess. that it actually really has something to do with like a Boy Scout thing, like not like the United Boy Scouts Association, but like something in Korea, like they have like a Boy Scout thing and like it's something connected <laughs> to like Korean Boy Scouts. Which I, you know, so I did not know actually. I've just been like, oh, it's just BTS. Now. I had never heard of Boys BTS. So you guys are all, yeah. Yeah. There are no um, BTS. Nope. Are they the ones on, uh, what's the, the big hit that everyone knows? The, the, they have one now called um, I don't know. Is it called Firecracker? Is it Firecracker? I, I don't All know. I know I'm is not that with it. 
I'm not with yeah. it. <laughs> when we watched Trolls 2 with my kids, they had Korean pop as one of like the sections of the world. So, really? yeah. Now I'm sure BTS will be everywhere in my pretty. <laughs> you were uh, saying exactly. it's really yes. cool because you get this. Yeah. So she said, can you do something that's related to this order and sent me an idea of these um, these characters that they have, these like little cartoon characters that represent them. And so then I got to try making that. And then when I posted on the Instagram, sometimes those things go viral and then people start coming with the BTS orders. Like I did an avatar i don't know if did you guys ever watch avatar the last airbender yeah yeah not the james so, cameron no, uh, series, but yeah no, avatar I'd, say, I'd be like no you can't have those i'm sorry uh, no i'm just kidding um, <laughs> no they somebody asked me for an airbender order a few years ago and then when i put them up on instagram then i stopped i started getting like avatar airbender orders coming out of the the woodwork so so it kind of like things kind of come in waves especially as people see them on our instagram account but i get i get like new interesting things all the time the other day somebody asked me to do like the face of their horse for their daughter's birthday i said sure why not i'll give it a try so where does the artistic part get like are you i've just always have been artistic and i started by just hand painting things on these on the cookies and then moved into trying to pipe different shapes and then just somehow she got the dimensions right on a horse's face and if you've ever tried to like draw a horse or paint a horse i don't know how she did it but like it's the shape she did the shape of the cookies like the horse with like different like coloring of the batter and then yeah. she'll do a little highlighting for the. But how do you do that? Because there's no form. Like you have to yeah, cut no, it. Yeah, no, I just I fr- no no no. You, you have free to freehand cut. It. So I like will I will <sighs> color various portions of the batter in tiny little bowls, and then pipe essentially a base image, and then add like this is the hard part is that it can't dry too fast or else it'll all explode in the oven. So as it's all wet, you kind of have to pipe other things on top of it really quickly. Jesus. This is like uh, a six hundred dollar wow. macaron. No, I do. I, mean, I actually, be, yeah. honestly, I do. I, I have reasonable prices, but they things fall like our standard macarons retail for two fifty plus tax. These are like depending on how difficult they are, they're going to be between four and five dollars a cookie, and you have to order <laughs> it's a minimum. Still nothing. It's nothing. I know. Yeah. And when you have to order a minimum of a dozen because that's the smallest batch size I can make, and I can't just throw away all the batter. Right. And, you know. I was going to ask that. Yeah. If that. So if I come. First of all, how can I buy your product right now yeah. if I'm not if I if you don't have a brick and mortar? You can shoot me an email to hello at littlebluemacron.com and okay. let me know what you're looking for. If you want something that's custom, then I'll tell you, yeah, I've got that date available in my calendar. Here's the earliest you can get it. Or if you say, look, I just want a mixed dozen, we have extras at the end of every week after packing up everything for our wholesale clients. And we give our wholesale clients a total variety of flavors. So you're getting dulce de leche, almond and berry jam, lemon, lavender, honey, pistachio, whatever. And I can just throw those in to a box and somebody can pick them up from our commercial kitchen right now. And that that's box, what we want to change so that people can just come into the kitchen, right. our space. Yeah. yeah. And that box is how that'll run you how much? Um just a standard dozen that doesn't have any additional design on top of it is twenty seven plus tax. I do that at like a discounted rate. They're yeah. two fifty each but twenty seven if you're getting a dozen. Right you can get a six pack that's fifteen plus tax. Okay. Uh, so you either find your at a farmer's market or email you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not doing a ton of markets these days. I'm doing a select few like the Raleigh Night Market and I'm going to be doing a pop-up at the Willard eventually. There's the website littlebluemacroom.com. Insta- yeah, she's all over Instagram. Yeah, people can questions through there. People and, send me DMs. Uh, now yeah. we have littlebluebakehouse.com as well. Uh-huh. You'll be able to find a link on there for Little Blue Macaron and all that I'm kind so of stuff. I'm so excited to check that out. That yeah. sounds cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, sounds uh, awesome. We're definitely going to be picking say, your brain. Uh, but I don't know if you've had this or this has come into your purview, but think about us uh, in July. That's my son's birthday. He's obsessed with Ninjago. So I, start to look at Ninjago. It, I can make it. And yeah. honestly, if you just say, here's the theme, I can come up with it. Ninjago's something. cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he could tell you all about it. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> well, before you get out of here, we're going to give you a little bit of our own desserts that we awesome. have. That we also, that we, like we did it ourselves, we infused <laughs> yeah. alcohol into ice cream and then let Jennifer Randall tell everybody that she made it. Well, I'm talking about proof alcohol ice cream that is created by Jennifer Randall out there in South Carolina, crossing the border over here in these beautiful red branded freezers. We got to make sure that they get back in the markets, folks. There's a, you know, North Carolina loves to be very litigious about their liquor laws. Uh, so if you're outside of North Carolina, you can get you can get them anywhere. But uh, but we're still working on them because you're not allowed to have alcohol in ice cream <laughs> in um, a supermarket 
except for we did it for like a really long time and no one cared. So <laughs> right. it's coming back soon, but because we still... got them so popular because exactly. the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast was a big friend of theirs. Don't let the man shut you down. Shut, shut you down. So uh, contact your uh, local representatives to make sure that, that we can get that changed. But in the meantime, you can go to blue. Uh, you can go to proofalcoholicecream.com. You could order online. You can get them wherever they sell them, if you can access them, uh, but maybe not in North Carolina at this very absolute moment. Aside from that, typically, you could get them at the aforementioned Triangle Wine Company. Yeah, Triangle Wine Company. So uh, if you're having a macaron and you want, uh, I don't know, maybe a port wine or yeah. a, or some sort of ice wine to go with that, you can get that at Triangle Wine Company and uh, in their four locations, Southern Pines, North Raleigh in the Bedford community. They have my neck of the woods, Holly Springs, and they're in uh, Cary, right next to the Whole Foods over there. And uh, I bet a sparkling so, cider would be really, or a, like a, like a, yeah, a, a cider, you know, like like mm-hmm. a botanist and barrel cider or something. Okay, would be amazing with one of these macarons. Yeah, or Wolfer cider rosé mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. upstate New York. Yeah, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> so uh, yeah, go to TriangleWineCo.com and uh, don't forget to use the NCFB promo code there as well for a nice discount. But uh, Otherwise, thank yeah. you guys so much. Uh, your us. story, your marriage, everything is really <laughs> inspiring. And uh, for one, I can't wait to go to Little Bakehouse. And for you out there, uh, if you have a hankering for macarons right now, go to littlebluemacaron.com and you will eat very merrily. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the NC FB Podcast. And if you've stuck with us this long, review us on iTunes and remember, five stars are encouraged.